This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Christian M and Kim M. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, some more news on the Tesla Semi. What do we know so far? On the Q1 call, Elon said no new products for 2022 due to supply chain shortages. We also know that Frito-Lay has had an order and they were supposed to receive the first 15 Tesla Semis late last year. That of course did not happen. Now we have employees at the Frito-Lay facility saying that they're expecting the semis to be delivered soon. They do have an order for 100 Tesla semis total. A Tesla Roddy listener has said the semi has been at the Frito-Lay facility for the entire week and other employees at the plant have indicated the semi will be coming soon, meaning it could be added to its fleet sooner than most people are expecting. Frito-Lay has been expanding the mega chargers on site. It started with one and now it has four total. My personal speculation here would be best case scenario, maybe Tesla can scrounge up enough 4680s to deliver that initial 15 semis to Frito-Lay later this year because they have been waiting since late last year. That said, I wouldn't expect more significant semi-production until 2023. NHTSA did release the official crash report. We're not going to spend any time on it because I really do believe that most of this data is useless and not worth your time. That said, it will be linked below if you want to check it out. Inside EVs highlighted a cool Tesla stat. So if we take Tesla's record production at Fremont to be around 1500 like Troy Tesla had pointed out, remembering that there are 1440 minutes per day, that means Tesla is producing a round one car per minute out of the Fremont factory. So here we have it. Tesla has significantly raised prices yet again between $2,000 and $6,000 depending on the model and trim. What you're looking at is the different variants and the prices at the start of 2021, at the start of 2022, current prices, and then the current prices percent change from 2021 and the current prices percent change from the beginning of 2022. Looking at Tesla's most popular model, the Model Y long range, it was $49,990 at the beginning of 2021. Fast forward to today and it's currently 65,990 up 32% in just a year and a half. And so far, just increases in 2022, all of the long range variants have seen increases of more than 10% or versions that were formerly long range, the current dual motor all wheel drive, Model S and X. So don't worry, if you've already placed an order, Tesla will honor that price, so you will not have your prices raised. When it comes to a future Tesla product, the Cybertruck, these were the prices at the unveil. Incredibly attractive but fast forward to today and everything that's happened since that time who knows what the ultimate price will be but let's just say it's not going to be what they originally announced don't forget what Elon said on the q1 call actually on the price increase front I should mention it may seem like maybe we're being unreasonable about increasing the prices of our vehicles given that we had a record profitability that quarter but the wait list for our vehicles is quite long and some of the vehicles that people will order, the wait list extends to a year. So our prices of vehicles ordered now are really anticipating a supplier and logistics cost growth that we're aware of and believe will happen over the next six to 12 months. So that's why we have the price increases today because a car order today will arrive in some cases a year from now. And Zach Kirkhorn added, we estimate more around 10 to 15% of our cost structure is exposed to raw materials. We've been experiencing increases in costs in general, but also raw materials for a number of quarters. That pace picked up in Q1, and what we're seeing for Q2 is slightly higher than that as well. As indices move, it doesn't impact us immediately or directly. In some cases, we have contracts with suppliers, but then as those contracts expire, we have to renegotiate them so that there can be a lag. And lastly, Zach said, it's quite an unprecedented situation of raw material movement and all of these various lags and uncertainty around renegotiating contracts is we are trying to anticipate where things will go and that the company can remain financially healthy in various scenarios as we look out over the next four quarters. Simply put, this is Tesla telling us where its raw material prices are going over the next 12 months. I think if most of us are being honest, a somewhat alarming amount of our personal lives run through the interwebs. And once I realized this, linking up with Surfshark, the sponsor of today's video, really became a no-brainer. In case you've been postponed, 
postponing trying Surfshark, now would be a great time as for June only, they're offering electrified subscribers their antivirus software for free. Surfshark is a VPN that makes your internet browsing private, ensuring your internet provider doesn't track you, and it also encrypts your sensitive personal data to protect you from hackers. There are other reasons to use a VPN like Surfshark too. It has a clean web feature that will block ads, trackers, and malware from phishing attempts. You can also make your IP address look like it's coming from a different country, so you can stream video from locations around the world and bypass geo restrictions. One of my favorite features about Surfshark is the user interface could not be any easier to use. Surfshark is also one of the only VPNs to allow one account on an unlimited number of devices, which is a big deal for the Loomis household. You can use my code electrified to get 83% off and three extra months free. And for the month of June only, you will also get Surfshark's antivirus software. They also offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is no risk to try it for yourself. The link will be in the description below. And looking at the average new car transaction price for May of this year over May of last year, looking at the year over year column and going down to the industry average of 13.5%, you can see it's not just Tesla that has been raising prices. And there's really two ways to look at this. One, from a Tesla investor standpoint, sure, better margins, strong demand forecast, all of that good stuff. But from a consumer standpoint, it's frustrating because of course this is going to price a certain number of people out of a market. I mean, you're not getting into a Model Y for less than $70,000 out the door. And for some people that's just not doable. But by far, my biggest question is at what point will Tesla's demand become elastic? Meaning when prices change or economic factors change, then their demand finally does come down. I have no idea when that will be, but that's what I'm most interested in finding out. So far, it hasn't happened and hasn't showed any signs of slowing down. Now, over the next six months, we track wait times and production. Moving on, what did we just talk about as one of the main deciding factors where Tesla's next Gigafactory will be? We built the factory here in less time than it would have taken to get the permits in California. I love living in California, but the problem is you cannot get things done. Ask anyone, and anyone who's done a large project in California, uh, how long would it take you to get the approval to proceed? Two years and you're doing well. And like I said, we got this built in 18 months. Less time than it would have take, taken to get the permit done in California. And when you go back to the fundamental good of Tesla is to what degree are we accelerating uh, sustainable energy, it matters if we get it done now or in two years. Here we have Zootobi, a company that does driver's education that just put together the Global Happy Motorist Index by basically taking an average across different sites. Zootobi used owner review sites, Parker's, Honest John, Auto Trader, and Edmunds to record average owner reviews for these vehicles, only including models which had ratings from at least three of those sites and average ratings were calculated as an average of the ratings taken from each review site. And the results in terms of highest owner ratings, the Tesla Model 3 with an average of 4.53 out of five stars, followed by the Volvo XC40 and the Ford Puma. My guess would be if Zootobi does this ranking again next year, as the Model Y has more time in the market, it will make its way onto this list. Zooming out to the brands with the highest owner rating, Tesla once again the number one spot, followed by Land Rover and Mazda. Toyota still dragging its feet on full BEVs, now saying they want the consumer to choose. In my response, I would say electric vehicles are being put out there and the consumers are choosing them. Recently at its annual general meeting, Toyota was arguing it needed to offer a variety of car choices to suit different markets and customers. It doubled down on its position that it would stick with technologies including fuel cell vehicles and hybrids. There was some hope that current CEO Akio Toyota, who is 66, may step down in the future and someone else could right the ship. However, he said, I'd pick someone who understands the company's philosophy as my successor. So most likely nothing changing here with Toyota. On Facebook, Mate Remack, the founder and CEO at Remack Auto, shared a pretty exciting update. After five years of development, over a thousand people in the project, 17 prototypes, 45 crash tests, nine cars destroyed, today the first Nevera is regularly registered for now in Croatia and soon in many other countries, including Monaco, UK, USA, Germany, Japan, Canada, and more. Say hello to the latest all-electric hypercar. Now, there are only going to be around 150 of these made, and they will cost over $2 million. And not to tie everything back to Tesla, but this car really just highlights the absurdity of what Tesla has accomplished. Let me explain. Let's have a look at some of the statistics of the Nevera. 1,914 horsepower, 1.850 to 60, 
258 mile per hour top speed and a battery capacity of 120 kilowatt hours. In the battery pack, lithium manganese nickel based chemistry and using cylindrical 2170 cells with 6960 in the pack, max voltage 730. And go ahead and pause if you'd like, but this is a battery module from a Nevera pack. As you can see, cooling plates on the top and bottom with the 2170 cells. And not that range really matters on a hypercar like this, but Remac is expecting 340 miles of range on the WLTP cycle. The best conversion with about an 8% standard deviation would be dividing WLTP by 1.12 to get you to around 303 miles of an EPA estimate. Then we have Tesla selling a four door family sedan that's only 0.14 seconds slower than this $2 million hypercar, selling it for around $135,000. So the Plaid S is basically $1.8 million cheaper. Now I do think comparing these two cars is a fool's errand. However, this brings the roadster back into the equation because Tesla is going to want to have the halo vehicle for electric vehicles. So the bar has been set by the Nevera if the production version is ultimately 1.85 seconds, zero to 60. That's the number for the Roadster to beat. So this car really meant to be in a league of its own with only 150 produced, but for the electric movement and the halo cars and the SmackDown to ICE vehicles, this is a win in that category. CATL has announced what would be a pretty sweet battery pack release as soon as next year if these claims prove to be true. This claim, however, 13% more power than the 4680. I would just throw that out the window for now. What 4680 are you talking about? Tesla's or someone else who's producing more in a prototype phase? Even Tesla's at this phase for all intents and purposes is still a prototype, definitely when it comes to the actual chemistry. CATL ATL CTP cell to pack 3.0, otherwise known as the Kirin battery, should prevent thermal runaway and have higher energy density in the pack. In this battery, CATL will have a water cooling plate in the middle of the two layers of cells rather than just installing the cooling device at the bottom as in traditional designs. Perhaps most importantly, it will better support high voltage fast charging, making 4C charging easy, and the market will see that product from CATL by next year. Now, if you don't know what 4C means, I just did a video explaining this in detail. I will link that above, so be sure to check that out. So this is definitely encouraging for the EV space, even if Tesla doesn't use this next generation battery from CATL, who is a main supplier of LFP tech to Tesla at Shanghai. It should be noted CAT... It should be noted CATL originally said that this product would be launched in quarter two of this year, but that's about to have come and gone. And now they're saying we'll see that product from CATL next year, 2023. And lastly, I'll just say there's a ton of speculation about what this Kirin battery might do. People talking 600 plus miles of range, 30% more energy dense, zero thermal runaway, all of these things that sound great, but I'll just say, let's wait and see what happens, what cars these actual batteries make it into and what numbers they do at that time. That said, definitely something to watch. Ford shared an update on the Mach-E recall. You can still buy a Mach-E, but the vehicles will be held until it receives the software update. You can pause the screen if you want to read the in-depth problem. However, I just wanna highlight the expected repair, a software update update OTA or by visiting a dealer. It's not sounding like there are any actual parts needed like that CNBC report yesterday. Jim Farley said OTA update expected in July. Something to keep an eye on in Shanghai. Over the weekend, they briefly placed most of the city back in lockdown Saturday morning to conduct mass testing. The good news, it only turned up 66 cases over the weekend. So we're not fully out of the woods in Shanghai just yet. With that said, who doesn't love seeing the Shanghai parking lot at max capacity and back at full production again? We get some interesting data about the upcoming Cadillac Celestic. GM set to invest 81 million dollars in the Warren Technical Center where the Celestic will be built in late 2023 in Detroit. Now, we have AFS Auto Forecast Solutions coming up with this data that the Celestic will be hand assembled in extremely low volumes, around 400 units per year. Now, to be clear, GM has not confirmed any of these numbers. The AFS vice president said the Celestic could become the kind of top of the line model that used to make Cadillac the choice of celebrities and royalty. And yes, the car could cost up to $200,000. I mean, GM has to make up for the money it's losing with a bolt, right? 
In all seriousness, growing up, I used to really like Cadillac, so I do hope this car succeeds. The boring company's Vegas Loop has been confirmed to be able to expand into downtown Las Vegas. The application has been approved by the Las Vegas City Council and construction is tentatively scheduled to begin in early 2023. In yesterday's video, I showed you guys that meme from Shibatoshi with the Reaper attacking the real estate market next. I want to slowly release bits of information on why I think that may be coming. This chart is awesome. The average monthly mortgage payment based on median existing home price data with a 20% down payment and the average daily 30 year mortgage rate. Since the beginning of 2022, this rate has spiked significantly to historic highs, higher than any time dating back to at least 2006. There's far more to the story, but at least for now, this does not seem sustainable. The question becomes, how long will people be willing to pay these type of prices to buy real estate? At some point, things have to slow down. Real estate works on a lag. Sometimes it may be six to 12 months just putting it out there and more on topics like this that I will be writing about. Once again, stay tuned. Don't forget to check out Surfshark linked below and get all of your freebies, especially the June exclusive. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.